everybody. This is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we are going into the darkness and the depths today with The Night Cage, a new game from Smirk and Dagger. And a quick thank you to Smirk and Dagger for sending a review copy of this one to me. This is a cooperative game for one to four players where you're trying to escape from this kind of like labyrinthine abyss where you can only light things with the candle you're holding in your hands and you're desperately trying to track down the keys you need to escape. I'm going to go through a quick overview of play. This is a pretty straightforward game, so that won't take too long. Then I'm going to do a full solo playthrough controlling all four characters myself. And I have a separate review video if you want to check that out. And if you like the content here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, lots of ways to support us. We have a weekly podcast, a separate streaming channel, a Patreon you can support, or you can join the conversation on our Discord. But for now, let's plumb the depths of madness and check out the Night Cage. So in the Night Cage, the game is always played with four characters, although you can play with five, in which case you flip the board over and it's a larger version. And each player is going to start out on one of these start tiles, basically anywhere they want. And tiles in the game will always have at least two passages heading off. And the candles your characters are holding can illuminate one passage orthogonally adjacent to where you are. So red could see here and here. And as you move, because the main thing you'll do each turn is to move one space orthogonally along open passageways, you'll lose sight of things that aren't orthogonally adjacent anymore, which means they're discarded forever. And if you move back there later, it might be an entirely different tile that shows up. This is a labyrinth of madness and things are changing all the time. Now, when you're drawing the new tiles, you've got this big, uh, nice little candle holder that's holding all your tiles. And you do see some easier kind of nice ones on top before you get into the nastier stuff. And when you have multiple passageways to fill, like I do here, you draw one tile at a time, pick where it goes before you draw the next one. So you have a bit of control over how things pan out. Now, many of the tiles are crumbling. You'll see these cracks, including the start tiles. And that means the turn after you start standing on them, whether you leave or stay, we'll get to the staying action in a second, they will be flipped over and become a pit. They will crumble under your feet. Now, I just mentioned staying. That's your other option on your turn. You can either move one tile or you can stay where you are. Now, the bonus of staying is that you get an extra nerve token. You can hold up to two of these per character. You'll see that each of the characters I have laid out here on the left has one of them. And nerve tokens can be used for a bunch of things. We're playing the basic game, so you won't really use charging, but you can take an entire extra turn after resolving your first one by spending a nerve. You can block when you get attacked by a monster. We'll get into them in a second. And at the end of the game, when the tiles have run out, you can sustain to make the labyrinth collapse upon you a little bit slower. But when you stay, you have to discard the top tile from the holder, which could be something important you need, so you gotta be careful about it. Now, there are also a bunch of monsters that can attack you. In the basic game we're playing, you just have 12 Wax Eater tiles in the mix. And when they first get placed, they don't do anything. The second someone moves into a tile that they can see in any of the four directions, they can see as long as it's an uninterrupted passage. They can't see past walls. They can't see past nothingness. They can't see past pits. Once they see somebody move into their tile or along their tile or out of their view, they will attack in all four directions, again, being stopped by walls or nothingness or pits. And for every person that hits, two things will happen. First of all, the players will have to discard the top three tiles of the draw pile, which uh, means you could lose some things that are necessary for victory. And additionally, the player or players who were hit, their candle goes out. They're in lights out mode. Oh no. Which means every turn they have to move. And the big thing is they can't see anything anymore except the tile they're on. So they just kind of blindly draw a new tile and get rid of the previous one. But this is where the other players become very helpful. Whenever somebody with a candle is next to you, your candle can get relit. And how do you actually win the game? Well, there's two special types of tiles, gates, which there are four of in the four prisoner game, and keys, which there are six of. Each of the prisoners needs to get a key, so you can't carry two. You have to each individually get your own. And then all four prisoners have to be on the same gate at the same time. So if all four gates are discarded, if too many key tiles are discarded, then you immediately lose the game. You can't possibly get out anymore. And if you run out of time, your wax is burning low and all of the tiles are gone. You go into the final flicker phase, which means after each prisoner's turn, they have to remove one tile from the board until they either all congregate on the same gate or uh, more likely they just die in agony, <laughs> trapped in the night cage forever. And that is about all there is to it. Let's jump into the game. If there's any nuances, I'll call them out as we play. So I'm going to try to keep the camera angle like this the entire time. You'll see the details of the four players. And this is the player order. We're going to have blue, yellow, red, purple. So blue gets to place their start tile first. Doesn't really matter because one very important thing I didn't say is that the sides wrap around. So like you can have a passage going from here to there. So all that really matters is the relative positions of your prisoners, not like their actual position within this grid. All right, blue has to place two. We've got two T junctions. And sorry, I should have looked at one of those at a time, but it doesn't really matter too much. Let's give some options. 
Okay, and then yellow is next. I often like to keep my prisoners kind of close to each other in case somebody's candle goes out uh, or if somebody finds a key, but they already have one. So there's yellow. But I often do it kind of in pairs. So here we can have purple a bit farther away. Their first tile is a straight, which will crumble. And you know what? I don't need a passage to blue yet. And they also get a T-junction. We'll have it going off in that direction. And then red can be over here. I don't think he'll use that uh, straight there, but at least he can kind of look at purple and say hi. And there we go. We are set up. We're going to start taking turns with blue. And again, outside of using a nerve to move a second time, your entire turn is either moving and drawing some tiles and see what happens or staying put, getting a nerve. And if you're on a crumbling tile, falling into the darkness. And actually, I just realized falling is one thing I didn't explain in the game overview. But basically, whenever you fall into a pit or choose to stay on a crumbling tile and let yourself fall into it, you pick either the column or the row you're on. You put your figure there as a reminder. And on your next turn, you're going to drop into any empty space with no tile there, a fill in whatever you can see, and then continue moving. So your candle doesn't go out from falling. You don't take any damage. You don't lose any tiles. You just uh, kind of have a little bit of a crapshoot as to where you will land. All right, so let's start out with, oh my gosh, blue and yellow have kind of, yeah, I've <laughs> really trapped these guys a bit. So we'll have blue go here, and that becomes a pit because blue moved off it. And after blue moves and triggers any monsters, we remove anything that can't be seen anymore, and we light new things, which is a nice little crossroads here. And they have a board to keep track of all the tiles, although I don't really care much about these things. I do keep track of how many monsters have come out, and of course, very important, how many gates and keys have come out, because if you lose all four gates, that's it. All right, so that was blue, and characters cannot occupy the same tile except for gates. Those are the only places that can have more than one character on them, so yellow will move. He's got two passages to fill. First, we got a straight that may crumble. Put that here, and then we have another four-way junction. Okay, red, uh, let's get away from purple for a little while, so that crumbles. And again, the board wraps around, so red is going to do this passage. We'll come over here near blue and yellow, and that. First one is a wax monster, the dark denizens here that will attack us. I'm going to put the wax monster up here because if you can move out of his line of sight, even jumping into a pit, uh, he won't attack you. And hopefully it won't be another one. There we go. Because if it had been here and either red or blue move to trigger him, he attacks in all four directions. So he would have hit the other character. So you want to keep them away from each other if you can. All right, so Rez encountered some danger. Uh, Purple doesn't have any way to be connected to the wax monster with the T-junction like it is, so he'll go here. And he's filling him from there to there and up above. We got another wax monster. Okay, so no one's going to really go that way, and the wax monster can't see red. There's no passage here. Oh, my gosh. All right. It's honestly not too bad because he has that pit to jump in safely before he gets hit, which means he'll fall out of the way. Both those wax monsters will go away, and that is clearing out a lot of monsters. There's only 12 of these guys, and we've already seen a quarter of them very high the top of the pile. I'm happy about that. All right, but how about blue? All right, blue could be putting yellow in some danger if we get a wax monster here. Hopefully not. Oh, and uh, this starting tile is out of sight, out of mind. It is gone. Because again, it is not orthogonally adjacent to anybody else. You don't have line of sight like down passages. The monsters do, but you don't. You can only see stuff that is directly next to you. Okay, I'm good. No monster for blue. Phew. Oh, crud. I just realized yellow does have a direct line to the wax monster. Huh. So if he moves at all, it'll attack red. If red moves, it'll attack yellow. So one of them is getting hit. But it's much better for yellow to be the one to get hit because he's next to blue. So he'll be able to relight his candle immediately. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to have yellow stay. If you don't move, the monsters don't see you. Think of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. So he'll get a second nerve, the max he can hold. But you just have to discard the top tile. Hopefully it's not a key. Oh, discard a monster? Heck yes, I'm happy to do that all day. All right, and now red. You could go over here to blue or jump in the pit. It's a little crowded. Oh, and we're working towards purple's wax monster if he goes there with line of sight. So yeah, he's going to jump in the pit. So this wax monster is activated, and sadly that means that he is going to hit yellow going down that straight line. And yellow can either have us discard three tiles or spend a nerve to only discard two. He's got two nerve. Let's spend one of them. Oh, and red's falling, by the way. We could pick the row or the column. I think the column seems fine. And the damage discarded two inconsequential tiles. Not a big deal. And yellow's candle goes out, but is immediately lit. So I believe that the tiles that he can see never even go away. So we only have to get rid of the tiles that only red can see. I think that should have already been gone. So that's gone, and that's gone, and that's gone, and yes, everything else looks good. 
So honestly, that could have been a lot worse. We haven't lost any keys or gates yet, so we're doing okay. All right, now it's Purple's turn. Bye-bye, uh, double monsters. They both go crazy, but he's already falling by the time they get to him. And uh, let's have him do the row, I guess, instead of the same column as red, so we don't double up too much. So all that stuff is gone. All we can see right now is blue and yellow's world. That brings us back to blue. So if he goes down here, he'll get to draw a lot of tiles, which isn't bad right now, because we've already seen a lot of monsters. And he has a lot of options to not have them be next to yellow or be able to attack yellow. So first, that goes away, and that goes away. Can't be seen anymore. And then blue's placing three tiles. First one is a T-junction. And the key thing is we don't want to put a monster here that'll also have line of sight to yellow. So sure, let's go ahead and put that here. Second one is just a straightaway, don't really care. And third one is another T-junction. We'll just give ourselves some options. All right, now for yellow, do I want to head left or do I want to be right next to blue? No, I don't think I want to be right next to blue. So let's go this way. So that'll stay because blue can see it. That'll stay because yellow can see it. But we've gotten rid of our four start tiles. And yellow's also drawing three tiles. We're living dangerously here. Okay, first, a straight. None of these are threatening blue. Here, we'll just have a straight to connect to that T. Another T junction, uh, sure. And another T junction. Where are the keys? Where are the gates? I don't know, but at least no more monsters. And all right, red is now going to land. And I don't want him to like land right here in sight of other people because if he lands on a monster, he gets attacked immediately, first of all. So falling is always a little dangerous, but then he could also get other people attacked too. So let's not do that. Let's land like here, kind of close to things. And he lands on, nice. Although that is a lot of tiles I have to draw, but at least he's safe. And remember that you do still take a turn after you fall. So that was not right. Ooh, monster. Okay, I don't want to put it there because that would see yellow. So uh, I don't want to see blue either. Let's have it go here so it's looking right into a wall on that side. Okay, and a T-junction. That gives me a way to escape the monster. So let's put that there. And another T. Um, I don't want to put the monster here in case I want to run that way. So we can put that like that. And wow, okay. So we got a lot of ways to go and one wax monster. That's almost half of them gone already, but still no keys. Oh man, and we're going down into the second half of the deck already. Okay, so Red still takes his turn and I'm getting a little worried about drawing too many tiles, but okay, I'll go here. So the wax monster attacks, but can't see anybody. That's gone, that's gone. And Red's drawing two tiles. Do not want a wax monster here because it could hit red and yellow. We got a T first, so let's put that here and we might as well start connecting the worlds a bit. And another T, okay. All right, now purple comes falling in. And I guess this would be safe. It wouldn't hit anybody. Gets him kind of close to blue. Maybe too close, but it might be okay. And he falls onto, oh, a crumbling straight. So sure, let's put it there. And T-junction going the other way. All right, so everyone is back in the labyrinth. Nobody's falling anymore. And blue, blue, where do you want to go? Could go into the crumbling one, and even if I draw a monster, I can just let myself fall into the pit by staying where I am, so it's not the most dangerous. But you know what? For now, let's go up here. So that can't be seen anymore, that can't be seen, but purple still got their path clear. We're just drawing a single one, just a straight crumbling, nothing too interesting there. Yellow. Let's go up here, I guess. And now real quick, something to clarify, this is the one weird rule of line of sight. If a character's passage dead ends into a tile because that tile has a wall, blue still counts as quote unquote seeing this tile because they see the wall that exists there. So even though yellow can't see this anymore and in a way blue can't see it orthogonally, it does stay in place because blue's passage dead ends there. So actually nothing else is gone from yellow's move. We're just going to find out what's here and down here. Well, give me a dang key. No, a T junction. Okay, we'll continue giving ourselves some options. Just a straight, what is going on? Okay, now Red's turn. Let's, uh, we're gonna lose a lot of stuff, but let's head that way. Red's doing two tiles, let's see if we can connect stuff. So first, a straight. Um, actually, wait, do I wanna do that? Because if this one ends up being a wax monster, I've placed two people in peril. So no, you know, we'll do that one. And oh, that was a good choice. That was a good choice, because now uh, Red can dodge down into the crumbling passageway, blue won't get hit. All right, purple, purple, purple. Same kind of thing here. If I go here and happen to draw a wax monster, I'm putting blue in danger. Could just let him fall into a pit by waiting, but now nah, I don't want to risk the discard. Although crud. Well, at least here I have two options. So if the first tile is not a wax monster, I can put it there. 
So that goes away. And yeah, I think we can see everything else. So two tiles, the pile is getting pretty dang low. All right. So yes, we wanted to put this here in a safe place. And okay. Okay, trust me, there are six keys and four gates in here, I promise. But if they just take forever to show up, that is not going to make my life easy. Blue, you're not going up there and triggering the monster. So do you want to go down there to a dead end? And then just like run back this way? It would just clear away this tile and this tile, and then he'd have some new options. Sure, that sounds good to me. Although, ooh, then he'd leave a pit behind him. But I'm a little worried about drawing three tiles at once since we're getting a little bit low in the deck. So let's go here. Uh, nobody can see this. Nobody can see this. And that should be it. And no new tile placements. And yellow, I think, will come back into the fold a bit. So that's gone. And that's gone. And we get one tile here. Still no keys. Still no nothing. All right, red, red, uh, we know where you're going. Bye bye, monster. So he attacks and luckily can't see through the wall to get blue, so misses everybody. And that is our sixth wax eater, by the way. So there are still six left in the pile, along with apparently all of our keys and uh, portals. Now, and red can't see that anymore, but he doesn't actually explore anything yet. And then purple, 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 purple. I go here, and that's a monster. I have nowhere to dodge, but I can let myself fall into the pit, so sure. Okay, we got a T-junction. Let's have it head up that way. And that's gone. All right, blue. <laughs> that becomes a pit, and we get to see two new things. Once again, we're really hoping one of them is not a monster, so yellow is an imperil. There we go. Let's do that. And oh, there's our first gate. Although with us having zero keys, <laughs> we're probably just going to let that one disappear and wait for another one. But remember, if all four are gone, that is your final like congregation points to win the game. Uh, it's going to be tough to win if you don't have at least one gate. And uh, hmm, with blue having that, let's have yellow head down and kind of get closer. You can have more than one character on the same gate. And... No, no, this does go away because it would be if purple's passage dead ended on this one's wall, it would stay, but purple can't see that. Yellow's got to do two. Show me a key or a friggin' monster. <laughs> um, I think blue might move in there, so I don't want the monster uh, where blue's going to go to get on the gate. Okay, and that one is safe. So yellow can run up there. Blue can go to the gate. All is right with the world. Okay, how about you, Red? You're clearly not going up there and triggering the monster, so he could stay here and fall in the pit or go down here. So that disappears. And we're just going to reveal this one. Oh, and this becomes a pit because it was crumbling. Ooh, another wax monster. Good thing he has this place to run down to. And good thing purple is not connected. We're getting pretty lucky with our monsters here. Speaking of purple, uh, you can stay here and fall in the pit. You can block Red's uh, point of exit. So Red would have to jump in the pit, but let's be nice about it and do that. Maybe that's nice. I don't really know. And don't worry about the fact that the pit has four exits now. The monster did not see purple when he moved away. All right, and we just got a boring old T-junction. Okay. Just to impress upon you, there are this many tiles left, so not a small number, but there are like four monsters in here, six keys, and three more gates. What the heck? That is like the majority of them. Okay, we're up to blue. Blue has no monster worries. Just going to go under the gate like we planned, which means nobody can see this pit. But I think everything else is okay. Blue's going to reveal these two. And even though that's my first gate, and I don't mind if it goes away, I'm not like trying to get rid of it. Okay, just a boring straight. We'll have that. And a T-junction. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Okay, yellow has to vamoose. If he goes down here and draws a monster, blue will be in danger. So, nope, we're going to go here. Bye-bye, buddy. And we're drawing two for yellow. A monster. Gosh, we are really close to being out. Uh, that one would have a direct line to blue, so let's do that and get something more normal, thankfully. By the way, with those two, that is nine monsters. There are only three left and still all six keys and the other three gates. Okay, red, uh, unless you want to jump in a pit, that's your only way out. So the monster attacks nobody. That can't be seen anymore. Bye-bye. And red can see this a single new one, but no worries. Even if it's a monster, the pit would block access to you. Oh, there we go. Finally, our first key tile. So when you move on to it, that prisoner gets a key. They cannot trade it. They can't hold a second one. That is their key only. Note that it's a crumbling tile with four exits. You're going to see a lot of stuff and really accelerate the game whenever you do it. What is really a bummer <laughs> is if you have a key and you reveal another key and nobody can get to it. So hmm, I need to think about that before I run on there. But we'll just hope our luck is good and have purple go here, I think. So that goes away. That goes away. 
We get a single one. Hopefully it's another key. Oh, it's another gate. I don't really need that. But that's fine for now. It's fine. Uh, blue, 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 blue. Let's go back this way. So that'll go away, but the gate's still there. We get to place two. First one is not a monster, so we're definitely going to put it here. And second one is just a straightaway. Wow. Okay, meanwhile, yellow, get out of that monster's path. Bye-bye. And we're just placing a single new tile. It's another monster. Okay, well, at least the order is good. Blue can get out of the way, and then yellow can follow them. But what is up with this? So now the question is, does red jump on the key now? I, th I think he's got it. Okay, so I'm going to get the key. So boom, you can't lose it. You can't give it. It is mine forever. That is gone. I'm just hoping and praying that none of these three are another key because the floor is going to drop beneath me and I won't be able to save it for anybody else. Okay, that's good. And that's good. Come on. And oh, a gate. Okay, I mean, that's three out of the four. That's not wonderful. But at least I'm not going to have a tough time keeping keys around. But some of these gates I got to preserve, I think. So with that in mind, and maybe to also connect back to red, let's have purple jump onto the gate. So you're gone and you're gone. Geez, three tiles. What will he find? Ooh, okay, a key. Um, let's have that be here. That way any of them can get it. It doesn't have to be purple. And another key. Okay, that's good since uh, multiple people can reach it. So that'll be purple. So now don't be a monster, you piece of crap. I'm saying you piece of crap because now this monster's got a direct line to that key, which means that uh, not only would Purple get hit moving to get the key, but also he would lose his light and the gate would go away. That's just a whole lot of bad. So I think we'll try to have everybody else kind of support him. Let's see. Blue's going to go back to the gate. I'm really loath to let that to disappear, which means two new things come in. I mean, I think, are there any monsters left at all? I'm not even sure at this point. Oh, there are. <laughs> That's the last one, though. I'm pretty sure math-wise, there are zero monsters left, uh, but still four more keys? No, three more keys. We actually have uh, three of the six out now, and only one gate left. Okay, so blue's cool. Yellow's going to run up here. Bye-bye, monster. He can't attack anybody. And he has to reveal right here. Okay, just a regular T-junction. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to use a nerve and have yellow move again, because that way, if purple moves off to get the key and gets hit by the monster and loses his wax, yellow will still maintain vision on the gate without being in danger of the monster hitting him. We're thinking here, we're thinking here, okay, and the T-junction goes off of yellow. So yellow has a key now. We are two out of four. And now red, 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 red. I could just stay where I am and let myself fall. And I feel like that's not the gate that's going to be the gate in the end. I think it's going to be one of these. You know what? Sure. Whoa! <laughs> I'll just choose to stay. Although, wait, wait. If I choose to stay, I have to discard one of the tiles. And there's a pretty good chance it could be a gate or a key at this point. There are no monsters left. So actually, I'll just have red head over. That'll turn into a pit. But that's gone. And that's gone. And that's gone. A lot of stuff can't be seen anymore. So red will have to reveal two things as he walks over. Um, I don't want to have like a key that only Red can get to, so that's pretty good. He has some options. All right, now Purple, sorry, buddy, but you gotta do it. Uh, he's gonna move over here. Monster immediately attacks. I will spend Purple's nerve, I think, to discard two tiles instead of three, because I really don't want to lose another uh, key or the last gate. So we discard two, we're getting dangerously low. There's one key, there's the last gate. God, <laughs> that couldn't have been any worse. But it's only one key tile gone out of six. It means there are still two somewhere around that can help us out. Now, Purple has lost his candle, but yellow can still see the gate, so we're good on that, but purple does not reveal anything else. He does get his key, though. Hooray. And that'll crumble under him when he moves off of it, and maybe red can relight his candle. All right, blue's got the last monster on him. He just has to go some direction, but I don't want to reveal too much, so maybe I'll go up to join yellow. Although, no, 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 I want yellow to come down where I am. So, yeah, let's have blue go here. Bye-bye, monster. And bye bye this and oh, I don't think anybody could see that. I don't know why that was there. Yeah, there's lots of stuff that <laughs> shouldn't be on the board right now. I'm yuck, yuck, yuck. Blue has to reveal two tiles. There's only four left. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, everybody. Okay, so there's the key. Oh, but blue's the one who needs the key. Oh, that's amazing. And yellow will be able to run in and preserve the gate. And the other one is just a T junction. I think we might have this. I could have blue do a second turn right now, but he would run out the last tiles. I'd rather try to make moves if it's possible that won't do that. So let's have yellow go first. That crumbles. That's gone. That's gone. And that way, being tricky, yellow only reveals one new tile because the second all the tiles are out, you go into the final flicker, which I'll explain in about five seconds because literally on the next turn, it's going to happen. 
Speaking of uh, red, man, red is the farthest out of position. There you go, red, and he has drawn the last tile. Oh, which is a key. That might be a little bit awkward, but it should be okay, I think. And that goes away, and that goes away. Now, here's the part that's a bit awkward. Final flicker. At the end of every player's turn, now that there are no tiles left, we will lose one tile from anywhere on the board. Now, you can safely choose ones that you would be leaving anyway, but combined with the fact that you can't place new tiles, you might eventually close characters out. Now, you can't avoid doing that by spending a nerve, but again, red's going to move away from that one anyway, so I feel safe letting that one go. Oh, wait a second, I forgot. Purple's light is out, so he can't see that. He can't see anything. Uh, now, red just revealed that one, so he would be able to see that. But yeah, right now, uh, purple's in a bit of a way, isn't he? Oh, my gosh. Does that mean I'm done? Does that mean I am done? I think it does because, oh, no. Because look, if purple moves on to here, that's going to crumble. There are no new tiles to get red anywhere. Ah, well, let's play it out. But this is a bummer. <laughs> Now, Purple's Light does come back. Not that it matters, because there's no new tiles left to see. But yeah, he's left uh, red, no path back at all. Uh, blue, I guess, can move here. Oh, and after Purple's turn, sorry, we could uh, get rid of this one next to blue, I guess. And yeah, then blue would go here. I guess he could spend a nerve not to discard something. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. Blue has to actually go and get a dang key. So here we go. He gets a key, and then he'll use a nerve to move back. That uh, crumbles. Then he has to get rid of something. It can just be the pit, I guess. Uh, yellow would probably want to stay where he is because moving would get rid of both of those. So he gets one of these and then he has to discard one. Uh, you cannot use one of these to keep a tile in play the same turn that you stay. So you can't just kind of do null turns in the final flicker. And then red <laughs> cries as he uh, stays, gets sick of one of these and has to discard something. There we go. And purple's like, bye, red. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Because the thing is, if Red jumps to the pit, which is his only option here, then uh, he has no new tile to land on. He'll just fall in darkness forever. And Purple has to get rid of a tile. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, and then Blue uh, can get here. And then, oh my gosh, has to get rid of a tile as well. He doesn't have one. So yeah, I mean, we lost. We lost pretty hard here, but uh, it's hard not to when you have all the keys so far down in the bottom of the pile. It's really much easier if you're collecting a few of them earlier in the game. So that was the Night Cage. Hope you enjoyed the play. And again, check out the separate review video. The link should have popped up just a second ago if you want to hear my thoughts on this one. It's uh, fun, but it's definitely got some flaws that might bother some players. Uh, check out the video to see what I think. And a quick thing I didn't mention, but you can make the game harder or easier by messing with the tiles. You can even add in difficult monsters and bosses, like this guy, the Dirge. Look, he just comes in, <laughs> destroys like half the board, and becomes a pit that just like blocks up your life. Lots of fun, uh, although as you saw, just the base game can be hard enough. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.